All right, we're going to go to Shannon Bream outside the Supreme Court. Britt, thank you very much. Shannon, what, what do we know so far? Martha, we have two really important things we already know. First of all, we have the Harris decision, and this dealt with people who are home health care workers. A lot of them care for disabled children or disabled relatives in their home. The state of Illinois wanted to force them into a union. What the court has said basically here is that the First Amendment prohibits the collection of an agency fee from personal assistants in the rehabilitation program who do not want to join or support the union. So these family members who are fighting to just be able to stay home, uh, take the government payments, uh, rather than institutionalize their relatives. They want to stay home and care for them. They did want to be forced into a union that would take a, a bit of the fee off the top and take a bit of that money away from them. And they said, the union doesn't speak for me. I want nothing to do with them. Here in this case, written by Justice Alito, a 5-4 opinion, the First Amendment prohibits forcing them to pay those union fees if they want nothing to do with the union. Now, something very critical to watch. When they announce the opinions from the bench, the Chief Justice says, with our opinion in Harris v. Quinn, for example here, Justice Alito, he reads the opinion. What he said today was with the first of two opinions. So we know now that Justice Samuel Alito has written both opinions, meaning he wrote the Hobby Lobby opinion. We know that for sure. We're going to have to wait to get it. That could tell us a lot. He was very critical of the government's arguments during the oral arguments here at the court. So you can take that one way or another. We're reading a bit of tea leaves, but we do know now for sure that Justice Alito has written both the opinions today, including the Hobby Lobby opinion that we'll get any minute. Well, that's Martha. fascinating because uh, we were just talking about the fact that a lot of people thought that Justice Roberts might put the Hobby Lobby uh, decision out and might have an opportunity to sort of m further clarify his feelings on Obamacare, at least through the purview of this decision. Shannon, stand by. Obviously, we're going to be coming back to you with more in the breaking news. I want to go to Judge Napolitano and get his reaction first to this union case. What does this mean for them, Judge? Well, this doesn't quite gut the uh, public unions in the United States of America, as some uh, of the people watching this case had hoped, but it is a substantial, substantial setback for them. It's a setback for uh, state legislatures, the more liberal or progressive state legislatures, that want to force people to join public unions uh, because they can no longer require them to pay dues. If they can't require them to pay dues, then there's no advantage to forcing them, uh, forcing them to do so. May I also say that I'm, um, I, I can't help but jumping in on the fact that Justice Alito has written this opinion as well as the next one. On this one, Justice Alito has been the leader on the court in restraining public employee unions. So without having seen it yet, and it's on its way into the studio for me to look at, this is probably about as forceful an opinion against public employee unions as you can get. Secondly, the fact that the Chief Justice has announced that Justice Alito has written the Hobby Lobby decision almost certainly, almost certainly means that the government has lost. Again, we have to read it, and again, we have to hear at least the initial words coming out of his mouth, yeah. but it is inconceivable that he would have written uh, an opinion supporting the government on that. Yeah, very, very interesting. Now, just to the union case for a moment, uh, it, it, it used to be there was a precedent, I guess, in 1977, a Bood case I was reading about this morning, which basically said even if you opt out of the union and you don't want to be part of its political activity, if you benefit from what the union gets for you in terms of an of a, 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 you know, employment and compensation package, then you've also got to pay us dues. So is that a precedent setting decision in regard to all of those arrangements? Well, I, I, again, begging the question a little bit because I'd have to read it, but it does appear and I haven't I haven't gotten it yet, but it does appear from the snippets of information we're getting from our colleagues who are quickly reading it in that building that you see uh, on the screen. Uh, as well as from the various blogs that are coming in. It does appear as though the Supreme Court has not overruled that Abood opinion, but it's put a backstop on it, saying we're, we're, we're rethinking the issue. You now no longer not only have to contribute politically to these union coffers when you disagree with their politics, you don't even have to contribute to their operating accounts if you don't want to be a member. Because the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, which guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of worship, etc., also guarantees freedom of association. And freedom of association, the right to join any group you want, also prohibits the government from forcing you to associate with a group that you don't want to join. And, and here, that would be the labor union. So we're waiting for the second opinion here, which we have already learned, according to Shannon Bream, will be written by Justice Alito. If it had been written by Justice Roberts, would you withhold your judgment about which way this went? Because certainly he surprised everybody two years ago with his health care decision, Judge. Yes.
personally, if I learned that the Chief Justice had written this opinion, my heart would be in my stomach. But, but professionally, I would have held back any uh, judgment on it because of the uh, creative way in which he saved Obamacare uh, two years ago. But it appears that just as the uh, Quinn case, the labor union case, was five to four, the five conservatives prevailing, the four liberals dissenting, it appears that that will most likely be, again, we haven't seen it yet, we haven't heard a word out of Justice Alito's mouth on it yet. It appears that that will be the same breakdown in the Hobby Lobby case as well. It also tells us, though, that Justice Roberts did not want to take this opportunity for himself uh, to talk about Hobby Lobby. I think that, uh, that uh, Justice Roberts uh, was chastened by the uh, overwhelming reaction of some of uh, his closest friends and strongest supporters to the creative way uh, in which he crafted the majority opinion uh, in the Obamacare case. The technical name of it is yeah. Sebelius. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that that motivates people. He's got a lifetime appointment, but he is a human being, and he is aware of where all this is going.